Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, you've got 19 days until May and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, your revision environment. Janison Savalingham suggested I talk about this and it's a good idea so thanks for that Janison. If you have a good suggestion for me then leave a comment below. The reason it's a good idea is because revision is all about focus. You are going to have to be concentrating on the topics that you're trying to learn for relatively long stretches and it's really difficult to do that if there are distractions around you. What you need is a place where you're going to be able to avoid those distractions. So I'm going to make some simple suggestions which might help you with that. The most obvious option for most of you is going to be your bedroom. Now if it's a nice tidy bedroom then brilliant, but if your bedroom is a little bit more cluttered then by all means spend a little bit of time trying to make it a more pleasant environment to work in, but don't spend very long. It can be very easy to get stuck on procrastination at this point, and procrastination is something I'm going to cover in a later video. If you're going to spend any time at all tidying up, limit yourself to 15 minutes, no more. Just make sure that you've got room to work, that's what you need. Otherwise, you're going to be using this as an excuse to avoid doing the revision which you need to. Getting that revision done is more important than anything else at this point. In your room, some of you may have computers, TVs, games consoles, phones, tablets, lots of things which could potentially distract you. And it's important to avoid those distractions. If it's something relatively small and portable and you don't need it as part of your revision, then move it out of the room. Take it downstairs, take it somewhere else where your parents are and say, can you watch this for the next 30 minutes, the next hour, however long you're planning on doing for revision, and get them just to keep an eye on it so that it's out of the way and it's not going to distract you. If it's something bigger that you can't easily move around, like a games console or a TV, then just take the remote control or the controller for that away, and then you won't be able to use it anyway. But you've got to be strict with yourself. Do this at the start and you will make sure that you avoid a lot of those distractions. That said, sometimes some of those things can be useful for your revision. So you are going to have to exercise a little bit of self-control. If you're using your computer or your phone or your tablet to watch a revision video on YouTube, for example, then okay, that's a reason to have that. But you need to make sure that you don't then go on to do something else with it, like sending a text to your friends. You need to make sure that you avoid that sort of thing, if at all possible. If you really can't avoid doing it, then I'm sorry, you're just going to have to step away from YouTube for a little while. Do some revision on YouTube as a separate bit if you're using that as part of your revision, but you are going to have to schedule some time that is completely based on you looking at your notes, you looking at your books, and doing revision the old-fashioned way. I've taught students in the past who claim that listening to music helped them with their revision. I've got to say, looking at the results, it didn't really seem to have made much of an improvement. If anything, it was making things worse. So although you may find it relaxing, save that for after you've done the revision. Whilst you are focusing on learning something, you need as few other distractions as possible. So leave the music off as well. Your room isn't the only place you can revise. It may be that some of you share your room, for example with a younger brother or sister, which can make things quite difficult because that younger brother or sister is going to want to go in there as well and they can tend to be distracting. If they're really not leaving you alone, then try going somewhere else. If you've got a dining room in your house, then go there. If you don't have that as an option and you don't have your own room, there are still options available to you. First of all, Think about family members. Do you have any grandparents? If you do, ask them if you could go around to their house and do some revision instead. They'll almost certainly be happy for you to do that. It's probably going to be much quieter and you'll be able to get away from a lot of those distractions which you'd otherwise have. Another great place to go and revise is a library, somewhere where the choir is being enforced by that librarian, somewhere where you're really going to be able to focus, and if you do need to refer to something in a textbook, or if you need to go on the internet, there's probably going to be the thing that you need to do that already in the library. You're not going to need to go looking for it. There's probably a library in your school, but that almost certainly has a closing time. It's probably not going to stay open that much after the end of the school day. So if you're needing to go to a library later, remember there are public libraries as well. 
These will all be quiet places where you can really focus on doing what you need to do. Almost all libraries have benches or they have tables which you can sit at and plenty of room for you to work. This sort of revision, somewhere quiet, focused on the information, focused on trying to learn it, really should make up a large part of your revision. So please don't skimp on this. I know that my videos have been helping quite a few people on YouTube, but that should not be your only revision at all. You should be making sure that you're looking at the other types of revision which I've mentioned in this series. Don't be afraid to use the other types of revision. Look on YouTube. There are more revision videos on all sorts of different topics. Use the apps which I've been suggesting, and I'm going to suggest more of those in future videos, but you can't just do that. It's not going to be enough on its own. You need to make sure that you're reviewing the notes in the old fashioned way that people have been doing since long before everyone had smartphones and tablets and computers. I know that some of you don't particularly like that, but we are getting closer and closer to those exams now. It won't be long until you're completely finished with that. So stick with it, you're getting close and you'll be fine. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.